Welcome to Life Conversations with Senior Helpers, the podcast that takes you on a heartfelt journey through the art of aging gracefully. Join our hosts, Christina Chartrand and David Chandler, as they engage in candid and compassionate discussions about both the joys and challenges of growing older. Tune in to gain valuable tips, expert advice, and essential resources that empower you or your loved ones to embrace the beauty in every stage of life. Let's embark on these enlightening conversations together. Here are your hosts, David and Christina. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next episode of Life Conversations. I'm David Chandler, and I am sharing that my co-host was <laughs> recently a contributor to a couple of Fox News articles, uh, one on, and we're going to be talking about dementia today, and Christina is going to be sharing some of her expertise in dementia. She was recently uh, a contributor in an article called Dementia Warning. Uh, don't ever say these 16 things to your loved ones with dementia. And then also the other article was for dementia advice. And here are 16 safe things to say to your loved one. And I, I'm so excited about today's episode. I know every time that Christina shares, Christina is our uh, dementia extraordinaire expert at Senior Helpers. And I always learn uh, from all of her knowledge that she's gained over the years and working with people like Tipa Snow. And so, uh, Christina, let's uh, let's dive in. And oh. we're actually going to start with uh, some of the warnings oh. about dementia. And uh, just if you can share some of the, the things you shared in the article about some uh, phrases to avoid when talking to people with dementia. Yeah, I think these are, this is really important because I think we get caught up sometimes and when we're a, a loved one that we know who has dementia or you are a caregiver um, for taking care of someone with dementia and, you know, the day could start out really smoothly and all of a sudden it could just go south because just of one comment that you said could really change things. And there are some just some basic things to think about when um, with a person who has dementia and what that conversation, because you should have conversations. Um, it's really important, but we want to be able to put the right words together. And the one, the number one, one wonderful phrase that people just get completely caught up on all the time is, don't you remember? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Because the fact is, they don't remember um, and, and especially and so, if it's, it's you're so dealing hard. with something that's in their short term memory. And when I look at short term, I'm looking at today or even going back a few months. And one of the ways and it's, this is a very simplistic way and this is not for everyone, but it helps people kind of get a visual of things they do remember. And so an easy way to kind of begin to think about it is so if someone has dementia, Think about a ladder. So a ladder that's on the ground and the ladder and the spokes that go all the way up. And at the top of the ladder are your short-term memories. And at the bottom are your long-term memories, the members that, memories that you had as, as a child, um, growing up as a teenager, as a young adult. Those are all your older memories and you have your newer memories. And what happens with dementia as it progresses, and this is not a perfect scenario for everybody, but it's easy to understand that your short-term memories you're going to lose first. So let's think of the ladder getting lower, lower, and lower. So in early stages of dementia, it may be things that you thought about, you know, a, a week ago or a month ago, you know, those are those short-term, but as time goes on, it could go into a conversation that you had an hour ago, 15 minutes ago. And we have a habit of, of going back to our person and saying, well, don't you remember we had that conversation that remember I told you that I was coming to visit you? Don't you remember that the kids called and we were going to have this event on Tuesday? And that gets very frustrating. And especially in the earlier stages and mid stage of dementia, because it's frustrating when you don't remember something that's hard. And it, and then the more that someone is saying that to you, the more demoralized and what we find out is a lot of people will just shut down 
and not say anything because they're afraid to say something or afraid to answer and they're just nodding their head even though they don't remember because they don't want to they don't want to feel that way and i know that's that's one of the phrases it's so hard when somebody who's not been in this situation before hasn't had a loved one that mm -hmm. has gone through having a diagnosis of dementia and i empathize so much for them because you want them so desperately to remember I know. and it's really hard i know i've had to educate my family when they've uh, when my my grandfather had dementia and so the family dad don't you remember when this happened or you know how how come you don't re gosh when it gets started getting advanced and they don't recognize you mm -hmm. and just my my heart goes out to the people that are listening that are in that situation and you want so badly to have that reaction of don't you remember don't you know who i am mm -hmm. and they just they don't it, it's right. not their fault it's not that they don't want to uh, but getting this education going through and learning some of the having uh some dementia mm -hmm. training education we have some of those resources available mm -hmm. uh, but it is it is a very common question that can be very agitating to people with dementia is because they want to remember, but they, they just don't. Nope, they don't, unfortunately. Yeah. Another thing that kind of goes along with that sometimes is like pointing out where, where things are wrong, um, that they're wrong, that they told you something that's incorrect. And that also can be very frustrating as well. So again, we're talking about you want to build a positive relationship with someone and connect with them. And when you say something like, well, no, that's wrong, mom, that's, that, that's not how you do it. Or no, you don't, you know, you don't make eggs that way. You never did that before. Or um, no, you, you don't drive. Remember, you don't drive anymore. The more that you do that, the more angrier they're going to get. And sometimes it's better versus try, having an argument with them because it's really easy to get in an argument just to kind of to defuse the situation and just say you're sorry right and even though you have nothing to be sorry about to diffuse it and try to get to the, going to font saying something positive and diffuse it and say you're sorry because you're not going to win the problem is is you're not going to win the argument because they don't have any reference around why you're telling them that they're wrong and so it's even it's hard to kind of say that but it's really better just to kind of let it go, diffuse it, let it go, let them feel calmed down, and then move on to another topic. Um, another thing that I find, and this is for our caregivers, when they treat the person with dementia like they're a child, and they're not, they are an adult. So doing things like, oh, good job. That's a good job you put your shoes on. Or, hey, let me help you. Let me help you button that up. And using more of a, the way you would talk to, you know, a five-year-old and talking to a person with dementia in the same tone is not the right way to build a relationship. Um, it, it is not a way to connect with them. These folks who have dementia, they are adults, right? And they need to be treated like adults. So you want to use kind of that adult type language you know, when you're having that conversation. Um, and I like to talk about using more visual cues versus, you know, especially in mid-stage and later stage dementia, using more visual cues. So instead of, why don't you take a sip of that drink? So take a sip, take, take a sip of that drink. I told you to take a sip of that drink. And you're better off going here. Or you taking yours and taking a sip and handing them the cup. So you visually show them what you want. So it just goes back to just finding different ways to talk to or to show what you want them to do and avoid the things that will get you into an argument. So those are some great tips on things not to say. Mm -hmm. What are some phrases that you can use uh, that you are good for loved ones? Well, one of the things I like to do to get somebody to do something you want them to do is ask them for help. Ask them to help you. 
So instead of it's time to get your coat on, it's time to go out, we've got to go to the doctor's appointment and you're going your, your direct, direction, 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 direction. You say, hey, can you help me? I need to find my coat. Um, and and um, I believe we have an appointment. Can you help me? Can we help? Let, can you help me um, figure this out? Giving them the directions of where to go so that they can point out where to go. So giving them something to do when they're they're in the car. But even if like getting them to eat something, like, you know, coming into the kitchen to sit down, well, hey, can you help me? I'm, I'm trying to find the napkins. Can you help me put the silverware out? Can you help me place them? And by asking for help, they're more willing to come and help you out because you've asked for it, right? And they want to help out. Everybody wants to help somebody else out, especially if you have a good connection to them versus really telling them what to do is a really great way to, to get them going. So just come in and help me. I need your help. And it empowers a person like, well, of course, I'll help you. I'll help you. What do you need? And especially when you're talking about mother, child, um, and a daughter is always a daughter, no matter how old you are. And a son is always a son, no matter how old you are, uh, especially using that that relationship of a mother and daughter or a father and son or mother and son. Um, that's a better way to kind of get them going and get them wanting to do something that you want them to do. A, a couple of my favorites from that article were the reassuring kind of soft of you're safe mm -hmm. uh, or the, the, it's okay. If you don't remember, let's just enjoy this moment together. Yes. Yes. Those are all so important, right? That, and it's hard, it's hard because you're trying, you want to have this conversation, but it's to enjoy the moment and the time that we're together you know, I feel like, you know, one of the things that senior helpers that we really focus on in the philosophy behind our Alzheimer's and dementia care program is focusing not on what they can't do, but focusing on what they can do. And so that's a real way to go in and go, well, what can they still do? And for many times they can still do a lot of this, a lot of things. And we want to focus on those things of enjoyment and things that they can do versus something that they cannot do. Um, and those, that's where those connections really happen. Um, I'm also a fan of giving choices. So focusing on this or this versus too many choices. So for example, if you're trying to get somebody to get dressed and maybe it's a pair of shoes, you offer black shoes or white shoes. So you're actually giving them two choices. They have to decide. They have to make a decision on which ones they want versus putting your, oh, go, go, come on, can, can, can get your shoes on versus giving them a choice because then they have a choice that empowers them. I'll take the white shoes and then they're gonna start putting them on. So providing those simple choices that also even help in, helps during meal times, um, things that you want them to do, providing a couple of choices because if not, they're gonna say, I don't want to. No, I don't want to at all versus opening the door and allowing them to make that choice is a really great thing. Um, one of the other things I like to talk about is not, don't be afraid to laugh. <laughs> don't be afraid to like, you know, when something silly happens or they say something and you say something doesn't make any sense and we make a mistake and then they make a mistake. Don't be afraid to laugh about it because laughing is a, bit, a way that we can build a connection with someone and just connecting on that level. And they love every. It's funny when people make mistakes and be okay about that for them to laugh at, at you as well. I find when I observe people who care for people with dementia, they are typically, they find those funny connections and things that they can just laugh about. And it really changes. It's just, you know, sending cortisol out, all out there. It really changes, right? Your whole perspective. So one of the one of the other phrases that was mentioned in the article was talking about saying things like tell me about this photo mm -hmm. and we have a, a tool that we use at senior helpers 101 ways to reminisce and yep. you can find this tool it's, it's such a great tool i was reading through it again earlier and i just love these questions these ways to engage with people that have a diagnosis of dementia uh, but let's let's talk about this tool for a little bit. Let's talk about some of the ways, some of the questions that we can ask people with dementia that will help them to reminisce and help them to 
kind of break that cycle, yeah. take them, take that focus away from any agitation and have some different level of engagement? Well, I reminiscing is a gift is the gift, uh, honestly, and goes back to that little that ladder kind of analogy. So think about all your memories, your late memories that you have when you were a child and a young adult and doll and raising young children. Those are you're going to those are powerful memories and they're muscle built. I mean, you're going to have them around for for a long time. And when you bring something in that's visual, like a photograph or a movie or you bring something auditory in like a song that they reminisce or a poem or even a Bible verse, and you say those, all these connections begin to have, and you're able to have really great conversations, and ultimately that's reminiscing. And there's a therapy around reminiscing, the importance of reminiscing. And this is almost, this is not just for people with dementia, but really for everyone. It allows a person to like share their personal experiences that they had and when you have such an age difference of someone who, let's just say, in their 80, 80s or 90s, it's wonderful to hear stories, right? To go back and hear stories of times when, when they were young, right? And especially if you are a person in, let's just say, your early 20s and you're meeting. I still love reminiscing with someone who is so much older than me because, you know, and I'm old these days, you know, to, to really learn about what it was like when they were a child um, and what kind of cars that they drove and what kind of food did they eat and, you know, um, what was it like when they went to school um, are just really, really cool things really to do with, with anyone. Yeah. I, I actually did that with my dad recently. He doesn't have a diagnosis of dementia, but... Mm -hmm. I was reading this article in a, in a men's magazine that it talked about what are some of the regrets that men had. And one of them was, I wish I would have had 20 questions, like basic 20 mm -hmm. reminiscing questions that I, I would have wish I would have asked my dad before he passed away. Mm -hmm. So I actually took those, took my dad out to lunch and we did this together. It was a, an amazing activity and talk about, uh, I think whenever I hear about this, the reminiscing or the poems, uh, in a in a previous job, I was working at a memory care, and mm -hmm. every Christmas I would go to the memory care, and these were people that had late stage dementia. Some of them were just about nonverbal at this point, and I would always go down, and at Christmas time I would read "Twas the Night Before Christmas," and people that I were was very surprised about would would memorize would have spoken up during this this poem this story it was the night before christmas and all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a and i would pause and they would uh -huh. all say mouse yeah. like every everybody in the whole the whole <laughs> memory care all the all the residents and i would yeah. do it sometimes over and over and over again we would sit there and just read the story multiple times a week multiple times a day and i i just love that and so uh just looking at a, a few of these questions, like, uh, can you tell me about your first paycheck? Can you tell me about your wedding day? Uh, what was your favorite place to visit in your hometown? I mean, there's this list of 101 questions. You could have conversation after conversation after Absolutely. conversation and probably repeat the questions yeah. <laughs> over yeah. and over again. Yeah. So I, I'd really encourage our, our listeners to go check out this tool. Uh, it, mm -hmm. is, it is just great as a way to have these conversations. And like you mm -hmm. said, going to the bottom of that ladder mm -hmm. and bringing up some of those memories, uh, you may even find out things about your loved one that you never knew about. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I never asked my, my grandfather about, tell me, I wish gosh, I wish I would have. I really right. wish I would have had a tool like this then to better engage them, have better conversations, help them with that anxiety, that frustration that they were feeling. Just help them to feel calm and let's engage in something else and have some fun together. Let's relax together. Let's enjoy this moment together, even though this is where you're at at this time in your life. I know. It's really important. And I think you know, especially for our, our listeners out there who are caregivers and, you know, on a day to day basis. And a lot of the things they're doing are based around tasks. And I, I get that there's things right. in the day to help you help your loved one out. 
But I would really encourage everyone to take some time every single day and just sit and reminisce. And I think what will happen, or at least it kind of brings back those connections and the joy that you all felt. And, and you almost get the person that you used to know back a little bit, right? Because you're getting that connection. And I think one of the things I think is the hardest for anybody when caring for someone with dementia is you have to accept them how they are today, not as they were. And that's not an easy thing to do. Um, that's probably one of the most difficult things. And by reminiscing, and especially about things in those, those earlier memories in your life, can kind of bring a little bit of that connection back. Yeah. So, Christina, as we're wrapping up, do you have any other resources anywhere you can point our listeners to for additional information? So at, at Senior Helpers, um, we have lots of information around our Alzheimer's and Dementia Care program, Senior Gems. Um, and there is a, 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 a video that can be downloaded and that it gives kind of a high level overview of what Senior Gems is all about. But there's also lots of other resources uh, out there um, to learn more about. Um, you know, one of my, one of the people that I respect very much so in the Alzheimer's and Dementia Care world is one is Tifa Snow and her company Positive Approach to Care. Uh, the other one is PK Bevel, who has a, uh, her business is it's Second Wind Dreams, but she has the virtual dementia tour. It's a very powerful tool. We've talked about that on one of our podcasts. It kind of gives you, simulates an eight minute experience of what it feels like to have dementia. Those are also uh, really good tools. And another one is very interesting and I've, I'm first time bringing it up is that really following um, Montessori has really developed a program around dementia. Um, typically you always think about it with children but a lot of the tools and the programs that they have around that really has found a, a really powerful way to, to build connections and provide activities and things for people to do. Absolutely. So much. Oh, let me do one more. Oh, I have yeah, to yeah. shout out for Town Square. Uh, is Alzheimer's, this is uh, yeah. an adult day concept. Um, there are not as many Town Squares out there yet around the country, but I would Google it, uh, townsquare.net. Um, it is a, a revolutionary adult day concept to really focus on people with um, with cognitive um, cognitive issues. And it really brings you back into a 1950s, 60s Main Street with lots of interesting activities. And it's it's really revolutionary when we think about day programming. Yeah. So much great information mm -hmm. today. Uh, and if you're just listening for the first time, uh, Christina was was mentioning some of our our heroes in the the world of dementia, and we've had uh, several of them on as our guests in previous episodes. So yeah. please do check those out uh, if you're in the 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 world of providing dementia care. If you have a loved one that has dementia, uh, there's a lot of great re resources and information in those in those episodes as well. Yeah. Well, this right. is fun. Yeah, absolutely. And we have some <laughs> other, even, uh, we have some other awesome, I, I wouldn't even say even more exciting, but we have some other really exciting episodes coming up. So uh, we look forward to having everyone join us again for our next episode of Life Conversations. All right. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Life Conversations with Senior Helpers. We hope this discussion has inspired you to embrace aging gracefully and independently. For more resources, tips, and expert insights, please visit us online at seniorhelpers.com. Stay connected, keep learning, and continue cherishing the moments that make life truly special. We're here to support you every step of the way. Until next time.